Uh, I'm, I'm Darren Murph, uh, Guinness World Record holder, world's most prolific professional blogger. I think that's the title they gave me. But uh, I, it's like, you know what, I'm just an average dude. I took no writing courses in university. My first edit was five hours long, and so trust me, if I can do it, so can you. So I'll start with that. I, I really want to talk about where we got started. Where we got started when it came to blogging, what are some of the obstacles we faced then, and what are some of the obstacles we still face today? So if either of you want to take it, you can, otherwise I'll jump in. Sure, I mean, I can, I started as a hobbyist. Like I, in the early 2000s, blogging was like a thing, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I, I kind of rolled my eyes a lot about it, but uh, a friend of mine actually started a blog on Ruby on Rails at the time. Uh, like very, very niche, very developer focused. And we kept hanging out having coffee. You, you know, he was living in the same neighborhood as me and he was, we'd be nerding out about phones. Phones were becoming a thing back then. Not the smartphone was kind of just starting like Blackberry and Symbian and stuff. But more importantly, phones were starting to have cameras and play yeah. music. And to me, the multimedia aspects of a mobile computer were the really cool thing. The kind of convergence of mobile computer communication and, and something that could consume and generate uh, content and um, so I was early on using phones to upload photos to Flickr and stuff from yeah. email like it was yeah. you know over an edge connection like crazy stuff like that and so we would nerd out and he said dude you got to put this in a blog blogging is the thing and I'm like you know at the time I worked in video games as a software engineer I'm like dude like I don't have time for that and he goes yes you do and besides you probably have to do some writing for your work sometimes and you probably hate it and I'm like, you're right, I kind of do hate it. And he goes, but this will make you a better writer. If you write every day or every other day in your blog, you know, it's something you're passionate about, it'll come easy. But more importantly, you'll develop a writing style and you'll really kind of get into it. And you know, this is around the time that Engadget and Gizmodo were born, more or less, 2004, 2005. Yeah. And so I was reading it passionately because I was like, oh, the, all the gadgets all the time, right? <laughs> yes, and so, um, you know, the next thing you know, my, my blog kind of grew and exploded. I found a bit of a niche in writing about camera photography, uh, phone camera photography, and about, at the time, the netbook craze hit. Um, taking apart netbooks and adding functionalities to them, right? I, I've always loved small computers, so imagine a computer that costs very little, what, 400 bucks back then, that is still completely made of standard parts. So you can actually take it apart and, you know, turn it into a thousand dollar computer with just a few parts. Well, this is back when you could do that. Okay. Yeah, back you could, yeah. now yeah, yeah. it's impossible, everything is integrated, <laughs> but back then you could still do that. And so I, I blogged about that and that exploded too. People would like, and Gajin Gizmodo ended up linking to my stories and that, you know, my blog got like, I remember at the peak I was getting like 30, 40,000 hits a day and this is back like in 2007, which back yeah. then was like, for a single person thing, it was crazy. And right? if I recall, you started that not as a business enterprise unto itself. No. So it was just something you wanted to do exactly. on the side. So it began as a side thing, a hobby, yeah. and it ended up getting traction in the blog world that actually yeah, did so, have revenue. So